<laughs> so we're in Northern Ontario. I'm not quite sure where, uh, somewhere off the Trans Canada, somewhere. And I thought that I would take the opportunity since I have no neighbors and there is no noise here whatsoever, which is fantastic to talk about one of the big questions that I get when someone finds out that I travel in this and I kind of avoid campgrounds as much as possible. I prefer boondocking and the overlanding you know, style. And that is, what do you do when nature calls? Because we all know that nature is one call that cannot be put on hold. That's a very good question. So stay tuned. I'm going to give you some tips, tricks, some info. You'll be able to answer the question. Do adventure dogs poop in the woods? Stay tuned. I'm Chris and you know. So I know what you're saying. But Chris, I've been told to dig a cat hole, you know, 200 feet away from campsites, away from water, away from food prep, six inches deep, bury my waist, pack up my TP. Yeah, no, not anymore. Uh, especially in more ecologically sensitive areas. They are now recommending that you do not do the old cat hole thing and evidenced by the amount of TP and human landmines we find on a fairly regular basis around our campsites, most people cannot measure out A, 200 feet, or B, they've been told about their whole lives that this is six inches. So what do you do? Well, same thing you do for your dogs. Stoop and scoop. That's right, I went there. So you can do it a couple of ways. You can literally use your dog's poop bags and throw it into a zip top bag, carry it out with you. Great if you're hiking, you know, the short term kind of thing. Or you can get dedicated waste disposal bags. They come with puncture resistant, I'm not gonna say proof, puncture resistant bags. And often they come with a, an absorbent agent and then you can go that way. Well, if anything is worth doing, it's worth overdoing. Now tell me this doesn't scream luxury. And if you haven't contemplated the minusculeness that is your life while staring at the infinite expanse of the universe under a starry sky, oh, you just haven't lived. I told you we're classy here, right? So why do I like this model? There are different models. You can get a cassette toilet. You can get ones that that are basically a five gallon pail and then you just throw a toilet lid on top. Those are good because they often come with a lid. And uh, if you're gonna be stationary for one, for you know, a little bit of time and or it gets a lot of use, uh, it tends to get a lot of flies. So a lid, is, a lid is a nice thing. But I like this because it folds down flat. And of course I can't do it now. I mean, there you go. And then, these are the bags. I'm not gonna open it up because there is a desic. Let's try and do this right. I'm not... <laughs> it's more comfortable with the toilet. So you open this up, you throw it inside the rim, wrap it around. That's what that little ring that kept popping out holds it in place. And then this is your puncture resistant bag. Um, I used these at one campsite and when I went to put the bag away, it looked as though something had been gnawing on it. So just keep that in mind. Your deposits might be attracting other attention. And you can, I don't know if you can hear. That's a desiccant. It's not compostable. And people might have a problem with using plastic. There is an alternative. I wanted to try it, but I couldn't because we were crossing the border. And let me tell you about this. I gotta stand up because I'm dying. Oh, never skip leg day. 
Or you end up like me and you always skip leg day. Where's my coffee? That's the pri that's the priority here. What the heck is my coffee? Ah, <laughs> oh, coffee is life. Come to me, my friend. Whew. Oh, I don't have a problem. I can stop anytime. So the alternative that I've heard some people use is, excuse me, I have to extricate Lily. She's like, oh my God, there's a lap that's unattended and I'm wrapped around a rock and however will we manage? Okay. So the alternative to the commercial duty bags, use like a kitchen compost bag and you throw in a couple of handfuls of, are you gonna come up? Of course you're gonna come up because heaven forbid a lap go unattended. Did you doubt me? Kitchen compost bag. Oh, there's a fly in this. Uh, a couple of handfuls of wood chips, like the kind that you get for animal, small animal bedding, and a sprinkle of baking soda. <laughs> yeah, baking soda. So the, the wood chips, uh, the wood chips would absorb any waste, and then the baking soda uh, would uh, reduce the odors. The problem with that was because, oh hi, was because we were crossing the border, I thought that the wood chips might be problematic. <sighs> um, and I didn't want to make a stop. I didn't want to have to find a, a pet store and grab wood chips and then likely not be able to use them because they don't exactly come in small containers. And I wasn't sure if I'd be able to bring it across the border because then I'd have to explain why I have a bag full of wood chips to go camping. So we went with the commercial duty bags. They are available most camping supply stores. I've seen them all over the place. Even Walmart has them. So if you end up running out or uh, you forget them, you can pick them up easily enough. So to wipe or not to wipe, I know some people like portable bidets. I'm not a fan of them because it just seems like one more thing that I have to pack. Uh, I do always keep a couple of rolls of TP handy, but I prefer good old baby wipes. Um, and the flushable ones, because you know, then you can just drop them into porta potties and stuff like that without any worries about anything getting gummed up. It's a nice thing to have if one is experiencing a uterine revolt while you're traveling. And they're also great for washing hands, wiping off things. You know, you, you come back from, you know, you feel gross, whatever. You've handled a bunch of dogs. Your hand is a mud pit and use some baby wipes. So that's, that's what, uh, that's what I would recommend. And I can't believe I forgot that. So now you might be saying, but my friend, I'm camping somewhere that doesn't have shrubs, no shrubberies, no hedges, no fallen trees, no rocks to hide behind. What do I do? I got you, boo. Had to move away from the dogs a little bit. Because watch, I'm gonna show you a magic trick. I'm such a nerd. Ta-da! Now, as you can see, it is something that you definitely, definitely want to stake down because otherwise, while you're in those moments doing your best Rodan impression, it's going to fly off like a 1930s farmhouse in Kansas. If you have dogs with you, Secure them to something solid and really make sure it is solid because I was out one time and found a tree, gave it a wiggle, seemed to be secure, tied the dogs around it, popped a squat. Next thing you know, I have a front row audience. The tree was rotten. It was rotten. And when I went back going, oh my God, I killed a tree. No, no, it, it was rotten. I just didn't shake it hard enough because uh, I was desperate and in a hurry. So unless you have really good leg strength, really good core strength, and dogs that will ignore everything, secure them to something. Hello. 
of course my old friend would say my friend used to make fun of me hello I'm not singing show tunes guy i'm just saying good morning how much potty humor we can throw into one short video i'm so glad i got a collapsible basically love seat because you know that way lily can not have to snuggle with me which is funny because she very rarely does it at home are you being silly are you being silly what are you doing meathead is still meathead right buddy and leo is off doing leo things on his tie out of course i'm off on an adventure This is comical, probably not in a good way.